Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. You know, it's an issue of priorities. When it comes to some of the major issues that I have with the Biden administration, the one common denominator is always priority. There's issues that are important to Americans, things that American voters want, and then there's what the Biden administration is focused on, which tends to be something totally irrelevant or more of a globalist uniparty priority, more so than what Americans actually want and need. And we've seen it on countless countless occasions. The economy is going to dirt, there's a cost of living crisis, the southern border is in total chaos, there's crime on the streets, and the Biden administration is focused on Ukraine or a bunch of woke crap. That's more of an example of Democrats' skewed priorities on a macro level. It also exists on a micro level. The most recent hate crime, the mass casualty event that happened in Nashville, Tennessee, well, you'd expect Democrats to be focused on the victims, to make the victims the priority. You know, the families themselves, or maybe the Christian community that was literally under attack. Nope, of course not. Kamala Harris was sent to Nashville not to focus on any of that, but rather to grandstand with the Tennessee Three and promote the leftist Democrat agenda to politically grandstand and to give fake wannabe Martin Luther King speeches instead of actually meeting with the victims and meeting with the families. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so take a look at the headline. Kamala Harris visits Tennessee to, quote, stand with gun control activists while snubbing victims of trans mass murderer. Vice President Kamala Harris took a trip to Nashville on Friday, but it wasn't to meet with the families who lost children and loved ones as a result of a horrific mass event carried out by a trans-identified school school perpetrator last week. Instead, she was there to console those Democrat lawmakers who were expelled from the state legislature on Friday for having disrupted House proceedings and protested the body in which they were supposed to be serving. Today, I stood with parents, students, and the Tennessee Three. They won't be silenced and their demands for gun reform must be heard. In Congress and in the state legislature, around our nation, leaders must have the courage to act. James Lindsay had a great response. They're pushing the quote, Tennessee Three, so we'll all forget about the Nashville Six and why any of this is happening at all. Remember the Nashville Six. The whole thing is just so perverse and weird. There are six innocent victims, but because of the circumstance, there's a massive Democrat media campaign to distract away from the actual victims in the context of what occurred on the day and instead to make it all about themselves. Kamala Harris traveling to Nashville to give this pathetically weird speech. They chose to lead and show courage to say that a democracy allows for places where the people's voice will be heard and honored and respected. And they understood the importance, these three, of standing to say the people will not be silenced, to say that a democracy hears the cries, hears the pleas, who hears the demands of its people, who say the children should be able to live and be safe and go to school and not be in fear. They said, we understand when we took an oath to represent the people who elected us, that we speak on behalf of them. It wasn't about the three of these leaders. It was about who they were representing. It's about whose voices they were channeling. <laughs> Understand that. And is that not what a democracy allows? A democracy says you don't silence the people. You do not stifle the people. You don't turn off their microphones when they are speaking about the importance of life and liberty. Fake rage, clearly acting. You can tell that the intended goal here is to make it all about themselves instead of the actual victims and the event. One of the Tennessee Three Democrats who was expelled from the legislature, did the exact same day the day before Kamala Harris landed. Yes, I tell you, it was a sad day on Saturday. All hope seemed to be lost. Representatives were thrown out of the state house. Democracy seemed to be at its end. Seemed like the NRA and gun lobbyists might win. But oh, that was good news for us. I don't know how long this Saturday in the state of Tennessee might last. But oh, we have good news, folks. 
We've got good news that Sunday always comes. Resurrection is a promise, and it is a prophecy. It's a prophecy that came out of the cotton fields. It's a prophecy that came out of the lynching tree. It's a prophecy that still lives in each and every one of us in order to make the state of Tennessee the place that it ought to be. And so I've still got hope because I know we are still here and we will never quit. I mean, it's such clear political theater. It's me, 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 me. Put the camera on me so I can grandstand, so I can use these lost lives, I can use use this horrible, tragic event to propel my political stock, my political image, take advantage for career advancement, instead of actually doing something substantive. Distract, distract, distract. They want the conversation to be about the Tennessee Three and Kamala Harris giving powerful, riveting, historic speeches, instead of focusing on a clear and growing threat. Leftist extremism, gender extremism, and the rhetoric that surrounds it, which is leading to an uptick in violence and targeted attacks on conservatives and Christians. It's impossible to take these Democrats seriously. First of all, because they're fake and they're political actors. And secondly, because of the disgusting double standard. You know, if it was a supposed Christian radical who committed a mass casualty event targeting a leftist organization or an LGBTQ bar or center, whatever it is, the Democrat approach would obviously be very different. I mean, it's not to say that they wouldn't be pushing the same gun control message. Obviously, they would. But there would be a non-stop focus, an anti-hate focus. We'd be hearing over and over again on every single nighttime news segment about right-wing bigotry and the targeting of LGBT folk. But if you switch it, if you invert it, it's total radio silence. And Kamala Harris won't even visit the families of the victims. I don't know about you guys, but to me, that's utterly disgusting. But it's a trend that we keep seeing with the media and the Democrat Party. You know, the same thing happened with the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. I mean, it's no surprise that that toxic spillage from the train derailment happened in Trump country. Well, of course, because of that political dynamic, Joe Biden has yet to visit East Palestine. He never even really addressed it. It took two or three weeks for Pete Buttigieg to get on scene. Again, let's venture into the hypothetical. If that happened in a poor intercity Democrat voting area, would we see the same approach? Of course not. They'd be lecturing us on environmental racism and infrastructure racism. They'd be on the ground on scene immediately, probably within hours, and they'd be pushing for legislation immediately. And we know that for a fact. Excuse me if I don't want to be subjected to scuffed Martin Luther King Jr. copycats. Oh, and I forgot to mention this earlier. I might as well just finish the video with it. But speaking of despicable double standards, Kamala Harris also said this during her speech. You might have caught it earlier. And they understood the importance, these three, of standing to say that people will not be silenced. To say that a democracy hears the cries, hears the pleas, who hears the demands of its people. Another element of the despicable left-wing double standard. When left-wingers storm a capital and demand political action, when they intimidate and disrupt proceedings, it's the people's voices being honored and heard in the chamber that is supposed to be for the people. But of course, when Republicans do it, it's an insurrection, and they should all be sent to frickin' Gitmo. Well, it's your standard Democrats, and that's probably why your Tennessee Three Democrat frauds were expelled from the legislature. Republicans were simply following your standard. In fact, I think they were being pretty nice. They were simply expelled instead of being held without bail in solitary confinement and being sent to prison for four years for simply walking around and being escorted by police. That's pretty much it. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you on the next one.